can you put this on? You guys want to try to pull this off? Oh. And what we can do too is we can take and get some of those roots. Is this an apple one? This is a Mishimin, I think. You guys want to come put it in a hole? I guess we got a couple strong girls here. We can help. Just be careful. We don't want to fall in the hole. Ready? You guys lay it down in there. Oh, me there. <laughs> Helping plants. Hi, I'm on TV. Dude, did you find a bird? <laughs> yes, she did. Oh, dude, it pooed on the hand. A worm. Wait, let me see it. Where are they coming from? One thing that the Anishinaabe community has, if we're going to do restoration, at the same time you do ecological restoration, you need to do cultural and spiritual restoration. You've heard an amazing part of um, just an honorable you know, set of stories from Earl that's kind of helped us to look and remember if we walk along that medicine wheel that when things were in balance and that hoop was, was completely connected, even in some communities and in some individuals, that hoop was intact one generation ago, two generations ago, three generations ago. But it's really, really hard for each of us to see that, you know, that's, that hoop and that for it to be intact today because of the, I mean, we live in a global economy. We live in a, a world where, you know, I think of, I'm an ecologist in my academic training among many things, and I think of the biosphere. Um, but have we extended that? Aren't there people that are living in space outside of the Earth? How long? How comfortable? They can, you know, it, some people think the excuse would be we can screw over the planet we can screw over our Earth because we can just be like Star Trek or Star Wars and just go to another place. And my ass is staying here. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but my ass is staying here. You know, I'm a product of the Earth and of the water and the skies. But as much as I go up into the thunderstorms maybe every once in a while, but I don't want to go any farther than that because this is where I see is my home. And and I think that what's what's amazing is all of us hopefully find our home here in the Great Lakes region in the heart of that turtle, the heart of that, you know, turtle out. And one of the things, you know, when I, you know, I'm just honored to, to hear some of those stories and to see how similar um, life paths can be. I imagine some of you sitting and listening to Carl's mm -hmm. stories, don't imagine yourselves being able to be in that same situation. You're like, but, you know, you're a, you're a you're a Potawatomi elder, Earl. You, you, you've learned the language. You, that was your grammar. This is your community. But look in the mirror. And sometimes looking in the mirror doesn't mean looking at those silver glassed pieces of objects. Sometimes that mirror, you know, to take a, to take a simple Nanabuzu story might be like the little story of Nanabuzu and the cranberries, you know? If, if you've heard about that highbush cranberry story, um, you know, our, our, our great mythic trickster hero, our, our teacher, our, I don't know, maybe to use a European analogy, our demigod, is that an appropriate use? I was just thinking, I was just thinking, if, if his mother is a Winona, Anishinaabe Kwe, first woman, Anishinaabe Kwe, he was our E, if she was our E, and Nanabuju's father was had Thunderbee, as a spirit being, then he was part human and part spirit. That's what the Greeks call demigods. Okay, I know that we don't really call them that in this part of the country. But, you know, we were having conversations about the Hiawatha Forest and Hiawatha. I still think that, you know, our, our, we still need to work with our U.S. Forest Service to maybe, um, you know, take that name back. The Wenabuju National Forest. Nenabuju National Forest. Okay, maybe there's going to be a debate. Someone's going to I want Nenabush. What do you, how do you like to refer to them? Yeah, is it Wenabuju, Nenabuju, Nenabush, Wenabush. Doesn't matter. In fact, what does Bucko call it? There's another name um, over in Bay Mills and sometimes Sioux Tribe um, for referring to our um, trickster hero. Something that had like a, a GK Wester. So, but that, that's not it, but it's something. Uh, there's another name. We'll, we'll, Huh? Jeez Ken. Oh, and there's a reason now that when you when you say it that, that you say that. I'm just gonna leave that 
Uh, that's a conversation you can have um, <laughs> individually. Because that takes us really deep into the culture. But the point is, that story was Nana Bajou saw these cranberries, and he was hungry. He hadn't eaten in days. But it wasn't the little Mishkigamin cranberry. It wasn't the little cranberries that grow in the bottle. It was the high bush cranberry. Uh, Anibamin, maybe? Uh, and what's important about that is that he saw uh, this tree, and he couldn't reach the berries. And he did everything he could to try to get those berries down knocking at the tree, jumping. He wasn't as tall as some of our individuals that are here today. He didn't have super jumping power like I heard that the Harlem Globetrotters the other day were in, uh, you know, in town. Like, wow, he wasn't like that. And he tried, and he still couldn't get it. And he got really ticked off when, when the birds came by and landed on the branches. And said, oh, let me go ahead and ate some of those, those berries. And then he sat there, kind of starving, and said, oh, I'm not, I'm not. he's really hungry. And he sees the shadow, even though he didn't realize the shadow of those cranberries, that reflection in the lake. And so he kept on trying to get to them, pick up, put his hand under the water, and they disappeared. And over and over he tried this, and eventually he, you know, was frustrated. It was night time, there was the moon shadow there, and uh, he reached in too far and fell in the lake. And he uh, bumped his head on the bottom of the water. Kind of similar but different story because none of you got a big fat nose from it, you know, bottom, right on the bottom of the water. And I'm telling you, the animals that were around there, when they saw him come out, they were laughing their heads off. They really were. It's kind of like a story that Marty was sharing <laughs> about a school presentation that a relative of his had. You know, they were really, they thought it was pretty funny. Um, but that was when Nenomaju learned by trial by error that you can look in the mirror, and sometimes that mirror, if it's water, will give you a reflection, but sometimes that reflection is not exactly reality. Or you see what you want to see, and sometimes you see what you need to see. And sometimes you see what has not yet to come. There's many things that can happen. But what was challenging is that was a great, you know, lesson, I, the book that, you know, that I see that repeated in talks about how it was a really nice science uh, way to teach about reflections but within an Anishinaabe perspective. And I point out it as one story, because there's, you know, we could share stories all day long, but what is important is one of those amazing things that we have here in the Great Lakes region is we have cultures and communities that still have some, not all, but some of those original teachings that come from the earth, that come from the water, that come from the sky, and that are still within us. And we have a context for how to live in balance with the Earth Mother and the Sky Father and all of our relations. Are most of us doing that? No, not at all. But one thing that the Anishinaabe community has, if we're gonna do restoration, you could say of the Earth, at the same time you do ecological restoration, you need to do cultural and spiritual restoration because... helps it to keep it from getting root bound so that it will spread out. Do you smell that medicine? You guys smell that? That's good.